What are the sonic differences of clocks? This is an interesting question, and it comes to us from David in Rennick, Virginia. And David writes, Paul, my name is David King, and I'm from eastern Appalachian Mountains in western Virginia, which I think sounds like a lovely place. I have a question about the different clock processing modes my Burstford Cane Man Seg 2 DAC has to offer. Here's a quote from the setup instructions. The Cayman SG firmware is capable of processing the incoming signal in four different ways, which in turn can produce a different sound signature and signal stability from individual source equipment. SPDIF clock signal, optimize XTAL processing, PLL clock processing, data recovered clock processing, uh, a, a, a mode, and those are, I guess, are the four. Perhaps you can shed some light on how different processing modes changes the sound signature. Thanks in advance. Well, um, yeah, this is going to be a little bit technical, and I'll try and keep it simple. But first, before this thing gets taken upstairs, I wanted to show you something. Look at this beauty. Look at this guy. This is our new 40-track Studer mixing console. It was originally owned by Neil Young. He used it for many, many years as his personal mixing board and, and recorded on it. <clears throat> and then um, uh, it was then taken over by uh, the record plant and recorded the Rolling Stones and has a lot of great history with it. It's all analog. Um, everything's on a module like this, and we're going to take these out, and we're going to change the electronics and upgrade the thing. But we, we scored this, this bad boy. This thing must weigh 800 pounds. I mean, I can't, I can't lift it. It takes, I think we had six guys just trying to hold this thing up. It is a beast. And we're going to try and take it upstairs into the new Octave Recording Studio uh, run by Gus Guinness. But I just thought maybe you'd like to see this. It's just, oh boy, all the history in this, all the great music that this has recorded. And soon it's going to record even more great music. Okay, isn't that cool? Uh, once it gets installed, we'll show you. But I just thought you'd like to see this thing. Wow, really cool. We are so fortunate to have bought this. Okay, uh, so, well, let's talk about clocks. So, in a digital audio signal, we have, and, and PCM in any case, um, we'll, just, we'll just focus on PCM. And you, most of you know I love DSD, and everything we record upstairs will all be done in DSD because that is the closest, well, it's better than analog recording, better than any tape recording, any kind of analog transcription is better, uh, a DSD is better than anything like that. But, and this is all analog. In a, the, it's easiest to talk about PCM. So in PCM we have a set of what we call words, and those words have a certain length to them. There could be in a, in a, um, in a CD we have 16-bit words. In higher resolution we have 24-bit words, 32-bit words, you know, 20. Uh, and, the, and the word length determines the, uh, the granularity, the, f the fine, fineness of the steps and how high we can count or how much dynamic range that we can get. So, and those words come across um, every so many times a second, right? And so in a CD, it's every 44,100 times, you know, it's 44.1, right? 44 kilohertz. Um, that's, uh, you know, so every one forty-four thousandths of a second, we're going to spit out a word, a 16-bit word. And all of that is controlled by a clock. And this clock is an oscillator, basically. And the accuracy of the clock is very important to how it sounds, how much jitter that we get, jitter being, um, you know, the, the movement in time and how that uh, uh, and, and, and how those words are output, whether it's in a steady state or whether it changes over time. And we're not interested in long-term time, we're interested in short-term time. So um, clocks are very important and the stability of the clock is critical. The, the short-term stability of the clock is critical for how things sound. So in this fellow's um, DAC, he has different ways to handle the, the clock signal. And the first one's a SP diff clock signal. Well, SP diff, the uh, Sony Philips digital interface, is the standard that 
sent, get sent over an optical cable or over a coax, um, and that is basically a multiplexed signal where you have the data and all the clocks, the word clock, the master clock, the bit clock, all that stuff. Um, so you have multiple clocks and data are all squeezed into one signal and sent over a single wire, if you will, or an optical cable. When the DAC gets it, it has to take it all back apart and separate the clocks and uh, the data. And that's basically, you know, what SPDIF clocking, that's standard. You just, you unfold all of that and you do it. And it's basically the worst way that you can run a clock because that clock has to, uh, it comes out of there and it doesn't, it doesn't wind up in great shape once you extract it out of that signal. So that, that would be the one that would be what you don't want to mess with. Um, optimize XTEL processing. XTEL is, is short for crystal. Um, and so there I'm assuming that they have a fixed crystal clock that doesn't care about what the incoming clock from your CD player is. Okay, and that's a much better way to go. So that, that one, we have a fixed clock, and if they did their homework right, they've got some sort of buffer on the input that can make up for when the SPDIF clock signal comes in too fast or too slow, it'll make up for it, and that's probably the one that will sound the best to you. Um, the next one is the PLL clock processing. PLL stands for phase lock loop, and basically what that does is it's a derived clock. So they look at the data, and you know the data is a bunch of square waves. So as as the as, as we go from zero to one in these series of square waves, um, we can look at at the angle of the square wave and and determine we can derive a clock from it using what we call a phase lock loop. And it what it does without getting overly complicated, it uses the phase angle of this rising um, signal. Uh, and we derive a clock from it. So I don't think I would want to to use that, although that's used a lot. I mean, when you when we do this SPDIF clock signaling, we use a PLL to extract the clock. So I don't really know what they are, are saying here. And then the last one is the recovered clock. I'm unsure about that as well because um, that's normally how we uh, get data recovery is by using a PLL. So from all of these four, I would ex expect that the optimized XTEL processing, the fixed clock, which is what we use, we use a fixed low jitter clock in, in all of our DACs and, um, it, it, and, and, a, and a buffer that we call a digital lens to, to try and keep everything in sync and on time and all that. So in, in your case, I think I would go for that XTEL processing. Okay, I can't wait to get this sucker in. Wouldn't this just be great? Wow. Think of all the music this is going to make. And, and I, hope, I hope we all get together and we're, we're going to form a community for Octave Records, um, and which will be the name of our label, where we change the paradigm of everything that happens in recording. We're going to make some spectacular sounding recordings, all DSD, but we're going to change the way that musicians are paid so that they get a really decent cut of the revenue, not just a tiny percentage of the profits, because we're not out after profit. And Octave Records, I, I don't know, if, if we ever do make a profit, they'll all be invested in buying more stuff. So uh, this is going to be cool. This is going to really be cool. All right, anyway, enough babbling. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.